the weather forecast with Coloca and its multi-purpose banquet hall, Il Palazzo. Hi ladies and gentlemen and good to have you once more on the weather forecast. Hope you're having a beautiful evening. Between tonight and tomorrow morning, the weather will be calm in most parts of the country with temperatures as low as 9 degrees. We're talking about a far north region with the Adamoa, east and central regions having temperatures as low as 14 degrees. We'll also have as low as 12 degrees in the west region with the southwest and south regions having temperatures as low as 19 degrees. Next, we go over to the North region, where tonight there is no chance of precipitation in the entire region, and same thing by morning, with the least temperature expected at Gidea. Next, we go over to the Littoral region, where tonight we have no chance of rainfall, and same thing by morning, with the least temperature expected at Kongsamba. And lastly, on to the Northwest region tonight, we have no possibility of precipitation, and same experience by morning with Fundong and Kumbo having the least temperature of 14 degrees. I encourage you to make our time and go discover the Mankon Museum in Bamenda. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Up tonight, the video of We Are All Champions, anthem of the 2020 African Nations Championship to be hosted by Cameroon has been released. Singer Jen Mary Ihims is our guest. Brigadier General Kar Valet leads the military to reassure people of the Northwest region of their security and urges them to conquer fear and disrespect ghost towns. And Cameroon is taking measures to safeguard its airspace against the killer coronavirus officials say can be brought in by travelers from China and Europe. The details now. Thanks for watching the 7.30 News on CRTV. I am Moki Edwin Kinzaka in Yaoundé. The Intermediate Lions of Cameroon have just rounded off a three-week training camp with a 2 0 victory over the Chaden counterparts over the weekend. The latest training camp was the third of its kind for Yves Clément Aroga's boys, who are streaming up towards this year's African Nations Championship on home soil. Jeffrey Abani reports on the team's preparedness nine weeks ahead of the competition. Host and win appears a big dream for Cameroon's Intermediate Lions but is at least enough motivation for the boys as they steam up towards the African Nations Championship. That reality is evident in the enormous efforts invested thus far in preparing the team adequately. Since his appointment on September 20 last year, head coach Yves Clément Aroga has already complimented his presence in the stands during match days of the Elite One Championship with three training camps, the latest of which ended last Sunday. Through the course, the fitness levels of the players has been greatly improved upon, but also the tactical awareness of the technical team tested through friendly matches, including wins over local sides of Young of Cam and Bambutus of Buda, as well as a first international test against Chad last Saturday, which ended in a 2-0 victory for the Lions. We still have a long way to go. We have a lot to do to build a good team. Thanks to this, Cameroonians are already getting familiar with names such as Ojong Kongo, Samuel Lend, right back Eta Bawak, and goalkeeper Simon Omosola, just to name these few, on whom hopes are already being built for a befitting representation in April. There are still some young stars we shall discover during the next camp. The championship, however, is 68 days away. Enough time for more work to be done with final preparatory camps expected in February and March. The official video of the 2020 African Nations Championship anthem has been released. The song We Are All Champions by Jane Mary Ehims showcases Cameroon's legendary hospitality and asks for unity to be upheld. Board in Summer reports. She arrived the nation's capital, Yaoundé, with an audio version of what was previously a simple proposal, and today it has become the official anthem of the 2020 African Nations Championship. For two days in the studio, she had to work on the remix of the anthem during different rehearsals. After taking all over several times, this is the final product. Yes, 
Yes, the quality of a song with the choice of words seduced the jury and was well received by the public. We are all champions by Jean Mary Ihims. Early two years into professional music, Jane Mary Ihims through her song won many hearts and has gained a lot of prominence. This song praises Cameroon's unity in diversity, welcomes Africa to Cameroon come April this year while preaching virtues of peace and unity with a refined refrain. This 26-year-old who hails from Benakuma in the Northwest region is a mother of one, a designer and a business lady. Recorded in two days with Arusa Studio in Yaoundé, this video is available on different social media platforms for different sports and music lovers. We are now here in the studio with Jen Mary Ihims. Jen Mary, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, very I must tell you, it's very beautiful out there. Thank mm -hmm. you. Now, just talk to me about the choice of words that Sama Bodwin was saying, the, the part that are well selected, well chosen. Uh, yes. Um, the choices of words were intentional, considering how Africa and Cameroon especially has been for the past years. We can only call for peace. We can only call for unity. We can only call for love. And we can only encourage, because we know football is that thing that always brings everybody together to, to, to support each other. So I couldn't have thought better than to, you know, mix all of this in one so that we could have something where everybody can enjoy, not only English or French or only Cameroon. Like if you can hear from even the, the beat, there's a little bit of South Africa, Congo, and a lot of, so. Since uh, it's an African championship. Yes, it Now, is. were you in any way inspired by what is happening just down your nose, the crisis in the Northwest South, was the crisis in the far north of Cameroon? Yes, pretty much. <coughs> yes, I was. I was uh, inspired by that because <coughs> I'm a victim of it myself. You know, doing business, raising a child, like up till today, I, I cannot live with my child in the same place because, uh, he, I feel insecure when he goes to school, so I have to always, you know, leave him in Douala and then stay in Boya. So it's, it's, it, it affected me too, so I decided to, you know, put it all in one, in the song. Now, now what, what motivated you to agree to submit this to the jury that selected it? I mean, and how was the advert? Were you afraid that, no, this thing may not work? Were you very confident it would do work? Yes, I was. <laughs> I was scared. I was scared because of the, f the time frame I had to do it was very short. I had two days to prepare this. And there were a lot of things that were not going right at the time. So yes, I was really scared. It was actually when I, when I submitted, I just, forgot, I just forgot about it. And when you were told that it is a hymns now, what was the reaction like? Well, like every other person, I was happy and skeptical at, at the same time uh, there was a lot of a lot there were a lot of questions and doubts oh, am i going to win you know it's really difficult to reach the final stage and not mm -hmm. win so there was that fear and joy mixed together now let's talk about the costume i've watched also there the northwest and south the, the one from the west region and the northwest region was very prominent from the far north are you the one who uh, did the selection or you had somebody who was standing behind you Okay, um, normally I cannot do everything alone. Like I said, if I'm a designer, but I'm not, I'm not a, a clothing line designer, I'm an accessories designer. Mm. But I had Sabi Pekin, who is also my manager, and with the help of uh, the, the, man, the, the, director, the director's crew, we all brought this uh, concept together. And where can we find the, 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 the video? Is there somewhere somebody who needs it can get it? Oh, yes. Uh, you can get it on YouTube at the Arusa Music. And you can also get it on Facebook at uh, Arusa Music and Entertainment. Before you leave, just a favor, a hymn. Yes. And a cappella of that beautiful music there. Okay. Africa, yelele. Africa, yelele. Africa, yelele. We're all champions. Thank you very much for coming. 
Thank you very you much. You are a champion. <laughs> we are all Thanks champions. Very much. We are all champions. Now, let's continue the news now with decentralization. The National Committee for Local Finance of the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development has met in its 37th session in Yaoundé. They discussed how local councils that have now greater autonomy and powers can raise funds for their development. The Minister of Decentralization and Local Development, George Elanga Obam, talks about the importance of the session they held. This meeting is to have a common comprehension of the law that has been just adopted concerning the local councils and the regions. We want to make sure that all the members of the CONAFIL will know what is about financial dispositions contained in the law and of course not only the financial aspect the general outstanding of the law i can insist on the 50 percent of the total income of the budget of the state that are going to be allocated to local councils many people in bali a locality in the northwest region of cameroon precisely in gokotunja division have again marched against ghost towns and acts of violence by separatist forces in a ceremony to hand over humanitarian aid from the presidential couple, the administrative officials of the area called on the population to collaborate with the military. Mebel Mekemdi Sakem was in Bali Kumbat and our report. They are from across the Bali Kumbat subdivision in the northwest region, saying no to what the term the excesses of separatist fighters in the area. The people came out in their numbers to receive the assistance from President Paul Bia and wife Chantal Bia, but used the opportunity to march through the different neighborhoods of the community with peace plans and placards distancing themselves from any acts of violence. The senior divisional officer for Ngokitunja, the divisional officer for Balikumbat, and other administrative officials congratulated and encouraged the people to carry on with their normal activities. We have given everything to the population. And the message is clear. Those who have eyes should see. Those who have ears should hear. This population has turned her back against terrorism. They have turned their back against division, against separation, and they stand for peace and a one and indivisible. Over 100 families from the area received the special humanitarian package made up of mattresses, foodstuffs and other items with gratitude to the presidential couple. The military in Bamenda has jogged through a close to 12-kilometer itinerary in a move to encourage the population to stand up against ghost towns observed on Mondays and rest assured of their security. The soldiers were led by Brigadier General Car Valer, who called on the population to conquer fear and collaborate with the, mini with the military. Winston Debga reports from Bamenda. These soldiers say the main business. And this is their way of reminding the inhabitants of the Northwest, especially those in the regional capital, Bamenda, that Monday is a working day. For over three years and counting, the streets of many parts of the Northwest are deserted on Mondays. It is ghost town day, and it is taking its toll on the people. Since Monday is a ghost town, many families have been left without something to eat because there is nothing to do. Now they, they will even buy a tomato on Saturday. On Friday, Saturday, you cannot even finish to sell all the tomatoes. Sunday, you struggle to even auction them so that you will not get spoiled because on Monday, you cannot go out and sell the tomatoes. The military people said, let's be going outside that will protect us. Last Tuesday, January 21, these soldiers were part of a jogging exercise to reassure the population that there are planned military operations to protect them before, during and after the upcoming twin elections. Political parties vying for the February 9 legislative and municipal elections are yet to receive public funding for their campaigns as stipulated by the law. 
This is seriously affecting the campaigns of some political parties. Ebenezer Kanga reports on what the law says with regard to public funding of campaigns. The Electoral Code provides that the state shall contribute to the funding of election campaigns of political parties. Section 285 states that public funds earmarked for the funding of election campaigns for the election of members of parliament, senators, regional or municipal councillors shall be shared in two equal parts among the political parties taking part in the elections as follows. The first part shall be paid after publication of the list of candidates to all the parties depending on the list submitted and endorsed in the various constituencies. The second shall be paid after the proclamation of results to the parties proportionally to the number of seats obtained. Up to now, political parties have not yet received the funds. This is affecting the campaigns of some of the parties. For now, we have struggled out of our private pocket to be able to print some few manif manifestos, a tricot and some few, but they are not enough. If there was enough money, we would have printed more and to go about the campaigns and many other things. During an encounter organized recently between ELECA, political parties taking part in elections, the civil society and the media, the non disbursement of campaign funds dominated the debates with the government called upon to respect the law. The Director General of Customs informs the general public that the ceremony to commemorate this year's International Customs Day initially to take place this Tuesday at 10 a.m. will rather take place as from 9 a.m. at the Air Force Base in the nation's capital. It will be chaired by the Minister of Finance, Louis Paul Motaze, and it is signed by the Director General of Customs, Fongot Fidelis. Fungot the 2020 finance law has instituted new measures to optimize the collection of fiscal revenue. One of such targets on paid tax dues with debtors given the possibility of paying what they owe in taxes thanks to some abatement rates. In our series on fiscal innovations in 2020 finance law, we begin by looking at what this will entail for debtors. Clarice Aretakan explains. The measure from the taxation department was successfully implemented in 2015 the main purpose being to put order in taxpayers' statements. Beyond this goal, though, the state is on a mission to mobilize a considerable part of tax arrears in order to reduce the amount of reserves to recover. It is estimated at 100 billion CFA francs. Going by Article L141 of the Taxation Code, tax debtors have the possibility of settling their bill through transactions following an abatement rate. This is taken into account at two levels impositions during litigation procedures and debts related to undisputed claims. The administrative and judicial stages are involved regarding unpaid amounts and deposits acquired by the state treasury. Public enterprises and parastatals as well as private entities will benefit from the measure with a window open for payments to spread through a six-month period. Tens of billions of CFA francs are expected to come from the initiative, which in turn is set to contribute in improving the business climate. One of the financial objectives of the state in 2020 is to increase the mobilization of non-oil revenue. It will be counting on the taxation department to achieve this feat when unpaid tax dues are recovered. The broadcasting time 10 a.m. to midday on private radio stations in the nation's capital has been generating some controversy following the arrest of a popular radio animator for invasion of privacy and defamation. Many listeners hold that the content of programs between those hours are captivating but daring. In Act 1 of a series, Sinta Sapra looks at the genesis of these programs in media stations which professionals say do not respect ethics. Her report. 10 a.m. Monday morning and the radios of most taxi drivers and roadside vendors in town are tuned to an FM station. The interest is not just the music, it's the programs which allow the listeners to air their grievances or weigh in on scandals. As you listen, the animators seem not to be concerned with journalistic genres and the ethics of the profession. 
Je ne sais pas, mais je m'en fous. Ça doit sortir, ça sort comme ça sort. Effectivement. The visible interest is to satisfy a targeted audience with any luscious details that shock. People thought that the 10 to 12 slot was reserved for victims of all social ills who could call and share their frustrations. Presenters then started using it as an opportunity to play judge and jury. But the 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. slot on many private FM stations wasn't initially intended to serve as public tribunals. The initial concept was to give the opportunity to the presenters to touch a vulnerable people. But we quickly uh, saw that it was an error concerning how things were managed professionally, and we decided to uh, to change and create a new program adapted to the public, but with professionalism. It is the obsession for ratings and the quest for popularity that drives some of these untrained animators and their station leaders. Many people who have the radio, at in, uh, they have the complicity with the presenter, with the speaker. If I have some advice to, to, to give, you have to be conscious. You have to do it as you have learned. With the recent arrest of the host of the radio program, embouteillage for charges of defamation, maybe the content aired between 10 to 12 on some of these FM stations will not be taken lightly. A senior official in the Ministry of Public Health says Cameroon is taking measures to protect its airports after the coronavirus hit China and some European countries, killing at least 80 people. Dr. Chancellor Bilungan Dongo of the Department for the Control of Disease, Epidemics and Landmines said the virus could be transmitted by travelers. Alice May reports on the disease and preventive measures that Cameroon has been taking. According to statistics from the Chinese government, in one month, the epidemic known as coronavirus has caused the death of 80 persons and has contaminated about 2,700 others. Three cases have so far been dictated in Europe and America. The coronavirus is a family of viruses responsible for respiratory diseases. We can have some manifestations like uh, cough, even nasal discharge, and it can lead to respiratory distress. The Republic of China faced an outbreak of this coronavirus disease, which is a new type. It can also go over the world and be what we call a pandemic. Coronaviruses first are transmitted from animals to humans, and then from humans to humans. The symptoms of that disease, you will have cough, you will have nasal discharge. It's often a by fever. According to experts, this contagious virus can be prevented through good hygienic practice. At the border or the airport, there is a mechanism to see people who are entering to see if they do not have the disease. Avoid close contact with people presenting those kind of, of symptoms. Make sure they have some hygiene measures like wash their hands with water and soap. The virus so far has no vaccine. The World Health Organization and the government of Cameroon have stepped up vigilance to prevent the disease from getting into Cameroon. The National Gendarmerie will in 2020 intensify its operations in different fronts where the country is facing security threats. In collaboration with other defense and security forces, they will defend civilians, their property, and Cameroon's territorial integrity and sovereignty. The Secretary of State at the Ministry of Defense in charge of the National Gendarmerie Galaxy Toga was speaking today as he chaired the ceremonial drills of the forces. Kilian Dandifon was there. It is the ceremonial drills of the National Gendarmerie. It comes up at the end of January every year. This year, the Gendarmerie boss, in a stock-taking note, said at the expense of the lives of some forces, the country met its security needs in 2019. Security, he underlined, is still a priority in 2020. 
The first challenge is to be on the rendezvous to ensure the security of Cameroonians, especially to end the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions. The National Gendarmerie in this respect has to intensify its presence in these two regions to better protect the population and help sustain reconstruction recommended during the major national dialogue convened by the President of the Republic, President Paul Bia. The 2020 twin elections, continuous fight against the terrorist sect Boko Haram, migration within the Semak zone, the 2020 African Football Championship, the 2021 AFCON, fighting on ethical behavior in the Gendarmerie, road safety campaign are areas to which attention will also be focused. Written congratulations letters were given to meritorious staff in a ceremony that was also a New Year Wishes event. Cameroon's defense forces will pay attention to three major issues this year. These issues are fighting Boko Haram in the far north region of the country, stopping separatists in the northwest and southwest regions, and making sure that elections are conducted peacefully. The Chief of Defense Staff, Lieutenant General René Claude Maker, made the announcement while receiving New Year wishes in Yaoundé. Larry Fande has the rest of that story. Loyalty reaffirmed, allegiance pledged to their commander-in-chief, His Excellency Paul Beer. Personnel of the Defense Minister say, like in other years, the instruction of the head of state will be executed without hesitation. The Defense Chief of Staff, General René Claude Meka, re-echoed the assurance while receiving New Year wishes from personnel. A clean balance sheet for 2019, presented here by Major General Baba Sule. Yet more miles to cover, more oceans to sail. He says the mission assigned the military by the head of state is to do everything to ensure a smooth running of the forthcoming general elections and also a return to total calm in the two English-speaking regions of the country. He urged the soldiers to stay at that duty post and be professional in the execution of the missions avoiding the polemics on social media and concentrate on their assignments. With regard to the war against Boko Haram, Lieutenant General René Claude Maker said the terrorist group have been contained by the Cameroon Defense Forces in collaboration with the local populations who organize themselves into vigilante groups. Maritime piracy and the twin elections came under review here as New Year wishes are exchanged. The Minister of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Social Economy and Handicraft targets the launching of a national strategy of entrepreneurship in Cameroon from 2020 to 2030 in order to contribute in boosting the country's gross domestic product. The information was disclosed at the ceremony to wish the Minister a Happy New Year 2020 at the Conference Centre today. Joyce Tata has the rest of that story. 2020's vision starts few days from now for the Ministry of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, Social Economy and Handicrafts with the International Fair of Handicrafts to promote Made in Cameroon, amongst others like... We target this year to reinforce the accessibility of the products of SMEs on both local and international market. We will be developing mechanisms in order to inculcate in our youth of today the mindset of self-employment through international colloquiums. The traditional New Year Wishes event was also an occasion to recount the successes of 2019, like the launching of the Entrepreneur's Kit, the first edition of the Entrepreneur's Week, as well as the creation of more than 200 jobs in the sector. Achievements which warrant the decoration of some staff to higher ranks in the ministry as some go on retirement. The minister, however, implored his collaborators to continue the good work in order to satisfy the needs and expectations of the private sector endowed with creativity. And that ends the news. Before we leave you, the video of We Are All Champions, anthem of the 2020 African Nations Championship to be hosted by Cameroon has been released. Composer Jen Mary Ehims was our guest in the news. People of the Northwest region of their security and their safety and he tells them to conquer fear and disrespect ghost towns caused by separatist fast fighters. And Cameroon is taking measures to safeguard its airspace against the killer coronavirus. Officials say can be brought in 
by travelers from China and Europe where 80 people have died. That ends the 730 News on CRTV. I am Moki Edwin Kinsika Yaundi. Thank you for watching.